Hi, Screen Printers. This is Colin from Rhino. Today, we're going to talk about yet another Illustrator design. And this one is it has uh, some overlapping blends. And we're going to talk about how to separate this so that when you uh, go to print on press, you actually have good color saturation. And I'll explain why this is important and go into why uh, you need to manipulate this with an illustrator uh, because of how they create their blends. And I'm gonna show you that in Photoshop uh, with uh, something I set up so you can see how the dots play with each other. The design here that I have is something that we pulled out of our art packs from Golden Press Studios. Great bit of art there. I love the skulls. I love their, their flashback 80s neon designs are a lot of fun. So this design here primarily came out of uh, one of the neon packs. What I did was I took their, their colors, um, made them, I took all the elements, but then I colored it differently uh, to focus on this vintage -y look. I went with natural colors because it's a natural type of design. We got mountains, we have trees. Um, so what we can see, so I'll break this down really quick. We have a blend in here from this brown to this cream. We have a blend here from this green into the cream. And then we have a blend, or I should say a fade, from this cream out to the shirt color. You can kind of, you can see where the elements are here, but it, it fades out just fine. So the reason why this video, for, for those out there who haven't gone through trying to separate uh, any of these bends and fades yet, uh, the reason for doing this, I'm gonna switch to Photoshop, is for something like this. If we do uh, a, f a blend, a fade, um, or a blend from 100% one color to 100% of another color, there's a midpoint, the 50% point, uh, where there's, um, where it looks fine to us on screen, but they're actually a 50% dot of one color and a 50% dot of another color. And I'm gonna zoom in here, and I'm gonna show you this. So this design, or this, this what I've done here, um, is I've taken, for math reasons, I just went with a 10 inch wide design. Um, I did a 100% to 0% blend um, from you know, zero to 10. So I knew at five inches, I had a 50% point. Um, and then I flipped that so that I could get that blend that you're gonna see in Illustrator. And so if I zoom in here, you can see that at this five point mark or five inch mark, we have our 50% line. And you know, you go, wait, those aren't dots, those are squares. That's right. At a true 50% dot, it's gonna be squares because a square mathematically fills up that, that value, that space, exactly 50%. And as we go further to the other side over here, sorry, I had the magic wand tool, um, you can see how the dots change. So I'm gonna turn this on you can see we go from dots to dots, but there's a midpoint right at 50% where it's squares. So anyway, so as we look at this, you can see that my red overlapping the blue, and I have a blend mode set to dark, I'm gonna set it to normal. So you can see uh, where it falls, normal, darken. So anyways, that's just simulating actual color blending, and I'll show you why we're doing this in a minute. So as the blue comes over towards the left side of our screen over here, um, use the eyedropper tool. Not that it's gonna show anything, but you can see that everything gets a little bigger, everything gets a little smaller. So we don't want our blends to look like right in here, like it's, it's muted. We need that 50% point, point, fifty percent point to overlap better. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to nudge that over. And what we can see is that's getting more and more saturated as we go. So I'm gonna zoom in. Again, I'm gonna stay at this right here. And we can see as that keeps going, we get bigger and bigger dots overlapping Kind of a really cool effect. Woo, psychedelics. So anyways, we can see that we moved 
So if this is a 50% point, this is a 40% point. So we moved our 50% over to about 47, which isn't a whole, isn't very far. So if I take this and actually move it, so my 50% point is now closer to the overlapping in the in the shadow areas of 27 we see some really strong saturation now obviously this is you know not perfect we still have you know red uh, over here it's not, it's not showing up I, this is the easiest way i can find to uh, demonstrate the the moving of the midpoint so that you get color saturation so that 50 percent dot drops onto a, a heavier area to get that proper saturation proper color development so as we look in, it's starting to look more and more purple. So instead of it looking faded, little purple, but faded, now we have color saturation within those areas that we need it to be saturated. So that's what we're going to do in Illustrator. We're going to take a blend. I'm going to create a blend here. I'm going to make this linear. I'm going to take this and make this. That's 100% value. That's 100% value. Here to here. Oops, had the wrong thing selected. You know what? Actually, you know, let's make this a little bit easier to see. So this is a blue to green fade. We know blue to green obviously doesn't look this faded here. So I'm going to copy this, paste it in front and slide it up. And I'm going to take this, this is a demonstration. So this is for visual purposes. If I turn the opacity value to zero, it disappears. And all we're left with is that blue color information. Same thing over here. So I'm gonna take that blue, I'm gonna turn it to 0% opacity and it disappears. Take this, move this up. And you can see that we have that overlapping. I'm gonna change the blending mode to multiply so we can see this a little better. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 50% point and I'm going to move this over. And now we can see that we're getting that saturation that we need. I'm going to take this and move this over. Opposite of that 70 is about 30. So we can see now that we have better saturation. Where did I leave my 50% point? So it's about 30% over here again, 30%. So now our 50% point is over at about 70, you know, the 70% point. So we're getting some really good color saturation, but we still have the fading, the, the proper fading out. But our midpoints are blending together. We don't have gaps like we saw in Photoshop here, when we zoom in, oh, let me try and get that back a little bit more. There we go. Let's do that. So you can see that at 50%, the dots perfectly overlapped and you had half of that value as open space. And that's what, that we don't wanna have that. Now it is true that with dot gain, those dots will grow, but you're still gonna have empty shirt space in between, which is what we don't wanna have for this. There may be times where that's a, a thing that you want to have, but we're not going to have that. So this, this little visual right here is what I'm gonna end up doing with these two pieces here. Um, I'm going to end up taking this piece and making another layer out of it and uh, creating, basically I'm going to color engineer my separations right now. What you can see is I've basically made four new layers within this design for each of my four colors. And because all of them uh, have uh, blending within them, 
uh, with the exception of the navy, I should say. It's just got a, a tint to it. Uh, I'm going to need to manipulate those individual uh, color layers so that everything overlaps properly. So we're going to fast forward uh, at this point and play everything uh, uh, speedy as, as we need. I'll jump in, possibly explain things as we go. So first step will be, you're going to watch me give these all names and we'll go from there. Okay, we're back. So what I did was I took uh, my cream layer and the color that I had here on top in the gradient, the brown, you can see that I was messing around with my midpoint sliders. That's that 50% point that we talked about and how it moved closer towards the brown. So I'm not changing the stop point of these color blends, but I am changing those overlapping points. And then after that cream did that, then I increased the value of the brown. Again, that midpoint jumped on top of it, so those two points went like that to each other. So I'm getting that saturation in those areas that I really want. So when we get on press and you see that video in the color development, I'll point those out and then I'll also show you the films and how they overlapped. Very similar to um, the Photoshop uh, that I just showed, the Photoshop halftone gradient that I showed you with the, the red and the, and the in the blue, creating the purple. So, and then from here, so that cream did the same thing here for the outside area. My, I, I have found, and this is kind of an emotional response, a little bit of a scientific response as well, to, um, to how it's gonna end up printing uh, on the garment. Your LPI, the size of your dots, is also gonna have an impact as to where this goes. The higher your LPI, the more dots you have packed in to a square inch, uh, the less you're gonna have to move that slider around. If you are doing really big dots, well, that's another conversation because you see the big dots. In this case, you want to be able to hide the dots uh, so that it looks very smooth and continuous. I will be doing this design on 230 thin thread so I'm going to choose, I haven't made up my mind yet if I'm gonna go 45 or 50 LPI. Uh, I'm gonna remain in a relatively safe zone uh, for resolving my dots, but where I've stopped with that midpoint is, is gonna be okay with both of those, those LPIs. Um, if I went up to 55 or 60 lines per inch, I would definitely change my stop point down to closer to a, a 65%. Uh, and again, that midpoint, moving, I'm, I know I'm beating a dead horse here, that midpoint moving over allows those dots to hit, hit on top of each other, spread out a little bit and fill in that background space and in the process of, of spreading out a little bit physically mix so that you get a nice smooth uh, color transition. So that's when it comes to doing blends, separating blends and, and visually uh, in knowing what you get on press, um, this is a very straightforward, easy approach. I did not do anything super complicated. Um, the complicated stuff was in previewing the design so that it looked correct for the, for the customer. But in separating it, it's a lot simpler. Now, if I was to try and do a white base for this, I would need to do things a little bit differently. I'd take a slightly different approach. This is set up to go directly onto the fabric. If I was going to print directly onto a base white, I would take into account um, uh, more dot gain, um, and I would change my halftone, uh, my stop point again, that midpoint that I'm moving around on the slider. Uh, and this is something that you can take, you know, you can take what I've told you and what I've shown you here, 
print it, play with it, and learn from it, and then you're gonna need to figure out what works best in your shop. Um, your EOM on your mesh is going to impact how much dot gain you have on press. Your mesh count selection will dictate your dot gain on press and how well your, your, your dots uh, resolve and print, as well as your squeegee selection. The softer the squeegee, the more ink goes down. The harder the squeegee, the less ink goes down and the more control you have. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of variables that come into play and you, you need to play on press in order to uh, actually you know, see what what's works best for you in your shop. You may choose an LPI that's too high for you. Knock that down, try it again, take the same steps. Print it again with a lower LPI. Probably look better. Um, conversely, if you start with a low LPI because you're, you're being cautious and you're playing it safe, try it again with a higher LPI. Just see what happens. A lot of what you see in this industry just needs to be done through playing in your shop. That's it for today. If you have questions, um, again, if you, have, if you have comments on how to do it different or, or anything like that, leave a comment down in the section, uh, the, the comment sections down below. Uh, I read those, I watch those, I, I respond to them. I want to interact with you to, to make sure everybody knows and understands. And maybe I find, a, a, you know, through one of your suggestions, a way to do this even better. Um, if you like what you're doing, hit the subscribe button. As always, reach out to us on our social media channels. Show us the stuff that you've done, all the interesting blends and, and fashionable prints that you've done. We would love to see them. We'd love to share them with the rest of the world. And talk about the processes that you did to get there. Yeah, so we're gonna finish it up with that. Talk to you later, screen printers. Have a great day.